Sometimes a new perspective is all that's needed to shift our way of thinking and bring us to a new state of mind. In this next hour, join author, medium, and intuitive life coach Kimberly Ray as she discusses spirituality interwoven through worldviews, cultural diversities, ideas, and experience. Share stories and embrace growth on Mindful Moments with Kimberly Ray as she offers tips and strategies for expanded awareness, welcomes callers for questions, and offers intuitive guidance from spirit and inspirational conversations. Good evening, everyone. I hope you all are having a wonderful, relaxing Tuesday evening. Thank you all for joining me once again for another episode of Mindful Moments. Tonight, I have a special guest for you guys. Um, before we get before we get there, I want to once again thank you for joining me. Thank you, Om Times, um, for having me. It's such a pleasure every week to be here to create community, and share space with all of you. For those of you that may not know, or maybe this is your first time listening, my name is Kim, and I'm a medium. I'm an intuitive life coach and an author. Uh, My book is called Inside Out. It's just to help kind of teach um, self-mastery through mastering the thoughts, mastering the emotions, when we can get those things under control and we live a better life, right? So that's the idea. The book is called Inside Out. Um, It's out there. It's available. Hopefully, your experience with the book um, brings you to a new and and maybe a better understanding of yourself. Um, So anyways, I want to share with you guys before we jump in and get started with tonight, as you guys heard last week. Um, I kind of I kind of did a little recap of the the retreat that we just finished up in Sedona a couple of weeks ago. It was such a wonderful experience. We had a great group of people from all around the U.S. Um, even some outside the U.S. We all came together, shared that sense of community and togetherness, and some really fantastic rituals um, and ceremonies. And that retreat. And Sedona was co-hosted myself and my dear friend um, and shamanic practitioner Ty Hundal. And Ty is on, on the air with us tonight to offer his incredible wisdom, insight, guidance, and hopefully answer some of your questions, too, um, if we can get to those later in the show. So welcome, Ty. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Now, just to kind of give a little bit of a backstory or back history on what it is that you do, Ty, what you specialize in, um, and what you share with people. Uh, well, um, I guess I uh, help people streamline their reality and share empowerment and um, the work through the heart and really uh, finding our purpose and um, using that purpose to change things. Um, I always teach that if we know the purpose to our experiences, then we can change them. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, a lot of times in in the times that I've been able to work with you or talk with you, um, the ways that I see you work with people is you have this uncanny ability to simplify things in the most precise manner, (laughs) to bring things down to the most simplest form. And, 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 like, bring people to that state and whatever they're dealing with, whatever they're feeling, and bring them into, the simpl- like, the awareness through simplicity. That's, you know, one thing, I, one common thread I've really watched you do no matter what you're working on or who you're working with. That level of simplicity seems to be really powerful for a lot of people. Would you agree? I do, and, and that's the heart. That's the medicine of the heart. Ooh, I like that. That's so true. Yeah. I'm going to have to make a note of that. Remember that. that. The medicine. Yeah. The medicine (laughs) of the heart. Simplicity. The medicine of the heart is beautiful. (laughs) So now you're also an astrologer, right? I'm an esoteric astrologer for the last 20 years. Uh, Astrology kind of got me into this work because I couldn't relate to others very well before I found astrology. Interesting. Yeah. So... 
tell me kind of and in the listeners about what does astrology not only tell you about people individually or maybe some of your clients or how you help your clients with astrology, but also collectively, you know, and what the collective is experiencing. Absolutely. Uh, astrology is a vibrational science. Um, so the planets produce frequencies in the same range in which our brain operates. So we've heard about the brain states, the delta, theta, alpha, beta, and those are actually ranges of, in which our brain operates its frequencies, and the planets produce frequencies in that same range and then travel through the vacuum of space at 150, 100,000 miles per second. Wow. So, My goodness. So the, so the human is really the transmitter and receiver of those frequencies, and all of the cycles on our planet as we grow um, you know, from every stage to our life is also connected to a planetary cycle. Okay, so, you know, sometimes I battle against myself when we hear, like, oh, Mercury's in retrograde, you know, right. and I try to convince myself, like, it doesn't matter, it doesn't affect anything. But <laughs> at the end of that retrograde cycle, I'm going, who am I kidding? So based on what you're saying, you know, those are effect, those effects are real and you know whether we're in tune with it or not or realizing it or not it's still affecting us right i mean we can't not be affected by that electromagnetism basically yeah think of it as your vibrational reality it's kind of like uh thinking um um you know the sun the sun produces energy uh we feel the radiation of it uh we feel the heat of it and it has a specific frequency um, multiple frequencies, actually, and so every planet kind of represents a specific energy, and really astrology is ancient psychology. Hmm. I haven't thought about it that way. <laughs> so, so, I guess break that down a little bit for us and what that means for Okay, here's a question that I think maybe a lot of listeners can relate to. Um, for those people like myself, I, I kind of – sometimes I, I completely go into coherence with that concept of, you know, things in retrograde are going to affect us. And I think about it, and I try to set myself up in the best way possible. Then there's other times where I'm like, no, it's not going to affect me. It's fine. You know, so if we're not in tune with it or – being mindful of it, how does it affect us through the collective, you know, versus independently? Does right. that make sense? Do you see what I'm asking? Absolutely. Well, I think the whole retrograde topic is huge for this year because every couple of years we have inner planets that go retrograde. And retrograde really means backwards in time or internalization. And so mm -hmm. when we go through these internalizing periods, like Mercury retrograde is the internalization of our thoughts. Uh, the Mars retrograde that we finished was internalization of our actions and how we organize our reality. And then Venus oh, wow. retrograde that we're in now is internalizing how we receive and step into the flow of things and how we attract. So when we get a chance to internalize you know, we're not externalizing, and that's really all we do, really, in our culture. So the retrogrades are a really beautiful periods to do inner work and to really discover things about yourself. Oh, wow. So fascinating. And it's interesting because, um, you know, I, I, I'm not an astrologer like yourself, but intuitively this information aligns with um, the stuff that I, I see feel and share and hear you know so and I think maybe that proves the connectedness through the collective you know because personally I'm not ashamed to admit I'm pretty ignorant to astrology and how <laughs> how all of that works but you can't I mean at the end of the day you can't deny that we're affected by it and I'll never forget when I used to do physical therapy working in the nursing home everybody dreaded the full moon because it just seemed like shit hit the fan on a full moon and everything went awry. You know, everything was out of order and chaotic and, tra and intense, you know, traumatic and just 
intense. And, and it, and so it's funny, you know, I, I definitely would flip flop for a while. Like, Oh, this doesn't affect, you know, it has no effect on anything. It's all in our head. And there's other times like where you really kind of surrender and realize it's all connected. We're all in it. You know, like you said, we're sort of channeling that reality, channeling that consciousness of, of the planets and what's happening. Right. And, you know, you asked about the masses and how the masses are really affected. Um, and in astrology, we have a generational sign for every generation. And it's mm-hmm. connected to the planet Pluto, which they decided it wasn't a planet. And that's the planet you should never decide is not a planet because it's a little package with a big boom. Um, oh, wow. It's death and rebirth. It's transformation. And depending on what year you were born, you fall into a specific group. And when we talk about the baby boomers, uh, that's the Leo group. And the baby boomers are treat me like a queen, treat me like a king. These are our parents. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and they yeah. can be dramatic about stuff. Yes, they can. <laughs> our generation is Libra. And this is uh, the 70s until about 83. Um, and we're, we all have issues in relationships. We're always trying to balance relationships. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Spot on. I can, it's funny how, you know, just revealing the truth behind some of these connections and these interactions or, or the truth underneath of it, you know, kind of, I always tell you the way you articulate things really just brings to surface a lot of wisdom for people that, again, it's very simple, but it's very profound too and transformational um and and the way you said that i think it's important for a lot of people to hear if you're looking for balance you know in relationships and any sort of relationship you know it's i always think just like you say go back go go back to yourself first and and feel that sense of completion there so that you're not displacing it outside of yourself that in that internal work that you talk of too is so important to take time for that um, and be present with it. You know, I think a lot of us in this day and age, we want everything outside of us to to be the stability or be the balance or do it for us, so to speak, instead of us being present with where we're at, what we're doing, what we're feeling, you know, and feeling wholeness and completion before we decide to share. Do you see what I mean? Do you, I feel like a lot of people sort of reverse that process. And you always wind up empty-handed, right. you know, do we not? We wind up feeling like people are disappointing us or they're not doing enough because we're doing a bunch. And, you know, we need that balance or that that give and take. But at the end of the day, it, it, it's not about that at all. Would you well, like so? we shared. Yeah, like what we shared with uh, with the group, you know, that giving to receive energy never equals really receiving. Um, right. But how, na- how nature does it is it receives to share. And when we do put ourselves first, it's not selfish. It's necessary um, because we can't share and anything that we can't receive. Right. Absolutely. So how... What advice would you give to the listeners that, because I know so many people that have such a hard time receiving, whether it's um, just love or, you know, financial assistance or anything. There's so many people that just, they feel like they're egotistical or selfish or self-centered in receiving, and they just think it's better to give as much as possible. What, What advice would you give? people to become more mindful of practicing receiving or what tips can they do, you know, on how to receive knowing you yeah, know, some of these people that are aware of right. this, but don't know how to make the change. Uh, the first thing I would say is think about giving like your bank account. Mm-hmm. You know, if you give it all away, it's completely depleted. And I don't think we really look at our emotional reality like that. We think if we give all of our emotional reality away, that we'll be fulfilled. Mm-hmm. And right. I really haven't found that in my personal life or my client's life 
that they gave all this energy away and then they were completely fulfilled by someone else, you know? Yeah. Motivated so, by reciprocity, you know? Right. So in the receiving, uh, you know, what's the opposite of receiving? What's the greatest teacher in how we receive energy, you know? Um, and really, we have to accept things to actually receive. We have to accept ourselves. We have to accept things. So the greatest teacher of acceptance is resistance. Wait, say that again. The greatest teacher of, re of receiving? Yes, the greatest teacher of receiving is resistance. Mm -hmm. Our resistance to accepting things because we must accept oh. ourselves to receive energy. And it's a step that a lot of my clients skip over in this idea that they're more open than they think they are. And sometimes we play the percentage game and they're 80% open to receiving. But that other 20% is not having mm -hmm. it. Yes, and it seems like that other twenty percent is more powerful somehow. <laughs> yes, like it can run your whole existence. Yeah, absolutely. So, I think for you know for people, it's it's. I think it, a lot of it is just it takes practice. It takes time and presence and practice to to be. So some people, I I have seen and I've coached clients into receiving because. You know, one of the things I've, I've always tried to teach people is you can't manifest the reality you want if you can't receive. And right. you have to be able to receive. And, and there's, there's so many individuals that have, they're so uncomfortable with that. Again, whether it's receiving love, even like compliments. I have met people that just reject every sort of kind gesture, offer, or love, you know, that you try to share because they're so uncomfortable with themselves, there, there's not self-acceptance there. So receiving anything externally just feels nearly impossible. And I think right. sometimes with people it takes just repetition to get used to what that feels like. Um, and there's so many people in our generation that are used to, you know, motivated and driven to serve externally or give externally. Right. And then, when you call them to that presence with themselves to, to share with their own heart, you know, give to themselves, receive to themselves, so to speak, they kind of like don't know what to do with that space. <laughs> it's like a whole new foreign idea and concept. So, right. and I want to talk, you know, we're going to be getting ready to go into um, a commercial break here in just a few moments. But after that, I, you know, just talking on this note of discomfort, I want to talk a little bit, too, on the big, scary word of meditation. It seems like there are still so many people that want to have the experience, but they're afraid of the experience at the same time because they don't know what it means. They're not sure how to do it or have, you know, expectations on what's supposed to happen during meditation. Right. right. So we're going to take a break, you guys. Thank you so much, Om Times Radio, for having us. We're going to take a break, and on the other side, we'll pick it back up. I'm here with my good friend and shamanic practitioner, Ty Hundal, and we'll see you guys on the other side of the break. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Own Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Connect at ownTimes.com. Ohm Times, creating a more conscious lifestyle. Tune in to the Practical Intuitive Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World with me, host Robin Fritz, Mondays at 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern. I'll cover personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, space clearing, past life regression, shamanic insights, energy healing, soul choice, and more all to help you tap your own intuitive and healing skills. No ifs, ands, or buts. 
Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. Thanks for listening to Home Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine, Paul Avgerinos. A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. Every day, eight kids and teens are unintentionally killed or injured by loaded and unlocked guns. Learn how to make your home safer at endfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and End Family Fire. Welcome back. Just before the break, I and I am I'm joined tonight by my dear friend Ty, and we were just sort of talking, um, you know, about the collective consciousness and how we're all affected um, through through what's happening. You know, bringing awareness to astrology, to how that you know that whole. Um, I guess system of awareness, that's what it feels like to me. It feels like a system, how that affects us, what ways that affects us. Um, and, and getting into, you know, I want to tackle, I guess, the word meditation here in just a little bit too um, and see your thoughts, Ty, on, on helping people approach the whole idea of meditation, what it means, what it actually is, um, and disarm sort of some of the expectations and fears behind that word. But before we get back into that conversation, I want you to share, if you don't mind, Ty, a little bit about what do you do personally with your clients one-on-one? What do people come to you for? Talk a little bit about the services that you provide and where people can find your information or how can people get in touch with you? Okay. Yeah, I'm based out of Sedona, Arizona, and my website is www.sedonasacred sun.com and I do a lot of sound healing with a homeopathic system of sound healing that I've been working on for the last five years so it's 32 hours of homeopathic music Um, also astrology readings and deep emotional healing Um, and I think a lot of it uh, is teaching kind of what we were talking about before uh, with sound and the physics of sound which I always equate with the physics of our feelings. You know, that's one thing we didn't get a chance to really get into is that in our mind, opposites attract. And that's kind of how we try to live our life by avoiding stuff. And if I do this, then this might happen. But with music, uh, as a musician, you you don't show up to the bandstand and play in the opposite key of the band. That's intellectual, (laughs) you know. You play in the same key. And so that still works for when you resist certain feelings, that feeling shows up everywhere. Mm-hmm. And then the mind tells you the past is repeating itself, which what's really happening is the resistance to that feeling is attracting the same feeling for us to face. And that's the physics kind of part of it. Um, right. So a lot of my work uh, also is connected to the Toltec traditions and the awareness of how to put two feelings into the same space to create a scalar wave which cancels the lower frequency. And I kind of opened up earlier with resistance and acceptance. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. And the next one will be judgment. And the opposite of judgment is... Any ideas? (laughs) Oh, you're asking me. I'm like, I thought... Yes, yes. So acceptance, right? The opposite of judgment would be acceptance. Yeah, acceptance and resistance. Uh, What I always say is that when you feel judged by someone, you want them to apologize so then you can therefore forgive. So so understanding is made up of judgment and forgiveness. And then the next part is where we try to work out the outcome and control everything. 
and that leads to betrayal and the absence of trust. So control and trust. Mm -hmm. When we get yeah. into the subconscious, it's facing our fears to find the love inside of us. And then our consciousness is sorrow and joy. And then our super consciousness is pain and pleasure. Interesting. So where do you find, like with your, with your work with your clients, where do you find people the most hung up? Is it control versus trust? Self-love? Self-worth, yeah. Something. Yeah, mm -hmm. self-worth. Self yeah, like, I, I think that's so interesting because I think at the core of who we are and what our nature is, in our essence, you would think it would be um, just like automatic. You know, you would think right. it's that self-worth based on our being, the fact that we are manifested in our, you know, current form and shape. It's almost like, I guess, when you when you get to the understanding or acceptance of your own essence, that self-worth is, is then automatic. It's like second nature. It's not even thought about anymore. That I, And I feel like when you get in that space, Ty, that's when your essence becomes shareable. Does that make sense? Like I can Absolutely. Like a shareable wave pattern. In, Absolutely. In like, like mm -hmm. Yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I had something uh, today that when we put our self-worth into a situation, when we put our self-worth in there, we're seeking to be validated by the situation. Right. And that's us saying that we're not worthy and deserving of the love that we are. Exactly. And I feel like, you know, and it goes back to that whole judgment thing in the mind that if we feel like we get into an experience and we fail, quote unquote, you you, you don't you still don't really feel that sense of failure when you're in that shareable wave. When you're in the, in the essence, basically, you're in this profound, deep place of acceptance of all that is, especially yourself. So then, no matter what you do, there's, there's no judgment to it you know like it's just accepted even even as simple as like today rock climbing um i'm currently down in the red river gorge um doing some rock climbing and you know was climbing up a route and unable to get you know very far and instead of feeling defeated or like a failure and then because i didn't place my self-worth in the ability to do this and complete this route you know um, I just accept what happened, accept whatever what is, and so it sort of disarms like that critical self judgment that we put ourselves through. Like we put ourselves through hell, you know, in oh, this yeah. process. We beat ourselves up, and then we and then we have to like do the digging again and, and the work again to, to sort of, you know, regain our self worth or our connectedness to it, and. And then you look back, you know, and you go, why did I do that to myself? You know, why are we so hard on ourselves? And mindfulness is key for sure. Going, reminding yourself often the judgment, you know, really serves us no good. So be, being mindful that we don't have to judge ourselves to know our worth. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you agree? Or, or what tips would you share to help people maintain that connectedness to their, their essence, their self-worth? Well, I think it's a great example of the failure thing because fear is failure. And if yeah. love is the opposite of fear, then love is success. Exactly, yeah. So and if you, mm -hmm. being in that place with yourself, then I, I feel like just from in my personal experience, when you stay in that place with yourself, then there's – you realize like that judgment serves no purpose. So it's it's literally to me it feels like useless, wasteful energy. Like, you know, putting energy into judgment feels just wasteful. Does that make sense? Like it, it, it feels like it just dies out. As quickly as you shell that energy out, it just dies off. It dissolves. It it can't be right. sustainable, you know? Absolutely, especially when you're able to meet it with your own level of forgetful forgiveness, then it can't stand. That's why when you put them both together, it cancels out the judgment, and it's only as real as we made it. Oh, that's 
so powerful. I love that. It's only as real as we made it because think about how real we can make our fear or our self-doubt. We catastrophize things and make them so big, and then we allow it to consume our identity sometimes. You know? Or it becomes and, our identity. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. How do you – can you talk a little bit about when you work with your clients and love the process where you have your clients intuit information about themselves? Explain that process. Explain what you're doing and what you're creating um, when you're okay. asking the questions and having your, having your clients sort of come up with the numbers and the shapes that you do and what's actually happening there. Okay. Uh, some of the number systems uh, first have to do with the Toltec assemblage point system. And the Toltec traditions, they teach that there are two worlds. There's our doing, which we're really familiar with, and then there's our being. And the points of assemblage are an energy system where those two realities meet. And it's your brain field and your heart field is where they meet. And when I ask someone to tell me how they are assembling reality, I'll have them give me two numbers, one through nine. And that will tell me where they're resonating and creating their reality from. Um, The other number systems has to do with um, the binary code as it's seen from the West African traditions, which are 16 patterns of ones and zeros. And I usually have people read themselves because if I tell them how they're coded, I become responsible for their reality. And that's not very empowering. Not Um, at all. (laughs) No. no. (laughs) And so the spirits showed me how to do this where you can read yourself and I can help you translate it and allow our dialogue, but, you know, the heart is the most important part of that. So if we gave them an example, like, uh, Kim, ask your heart for two numbers, uh, one through nine, for how you're assembling reality in this moment. Four and seven. So Kim is in her heart, and she's actually in the place of co-creating in her heart, so the spirit is present. So four represents the heart itself uh, to live from care rather than concern, because when we're concerned about stuff, it's really control. And so to truly live in the heart is to care about all things and be concerned about nothing. Nice. And then seven mm -hmm, is your co-creation. You're actually co-creating this space with all of creation, all of your spirit guides and your connection to source and all of the planets and sun and where we are in the universe and all of that. Oh, cool. Oh, I love that. I love that. But it's also the story. Yeah. And when you're, what you talked about before. Okay. But what you talked about before, really being in your heart and sharing energy, that's when your personal history, this idea that you're not – complete already, that's when it plays out. I see. But once you receive and share, it begins to dissolve that personal story, and you are just who you are. Exactly. You're just in that present. You're you're no longer your past, you know. Right. And and you can really, I mean, that that is, is, I think a lot of us can relate that that's pretty easy to see when, if if somebody's really in the essence and grounded in the essence, they, I guess some of they, you know, they almost seem like those mystical people because they don't have to build their identity around the things they've done, the places they've been, you know, um, and, and sharing that history. It's, you know, and I talk a lot about the people that I stay with here when I come to the Red, uh, my mm-hmm. friends Jeremy and Mary. And and I couldn't figure out what it is about them that I just love so much. I love being around them. And it's and, and you articulated it for me last time when I was t- telling you this in Sedona. Um, they have no or and share no per- personal history because they're here. They're so present, and it's that type of authenticity seems to enlighten that in everyone around them. Does that make sense? It's like when it's like it unlocks that for other people. When you see that level of essence and connectedness, it disarms the ego in others and unlocks that 
essence to surface. Completely it shareable. Like it. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Shareable. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then tell people what you do with assembling those numbers and shapes into music. Um, in the sound healing system, uh, sound and geometry are the same thing. So um, if you uh, – a circle pattern is two opposite frequencies because how do you create a circle? You have to draw a straight line 180 degrees from one side to the other and 180 degrees all the way at the end. And in science, they call this a scalar wave. And in music and science, when you put these two frequencies together that are literally 180 degrees apart, it cancels the lower frequencies. And we also use square wave patterns that destroy fungus and bacteria. That's what Wilhelm Reif used with the Reif machine that he made in the 40s. uh, The listeners know the history of the Reif machine. Uh, But it's all, it's just, it's just diminished and uh, bacteria and fungus can't grow in that environment. And uh, infrared light is also the same thing. It's a square wave pattern. Um, oh, wow, I didn't pro- know that. Mm-hmm. Every aspect of light has its own harmonic, and that's something I've really um, uh, dived into over the last couple of years because when we talk about harmonics, uh, everybody glazes over. It's like, well, what is that? <laughs> Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but all it means is it's the fourth harmonic. You take a circle, divide it into four equal parts. It's the fifth harmonic. You divide it into five equal parts, so on and so forth. Interesting. So would you say, just in general, generally speaking, if somebody's dealing with an illness, would you just say that they're out of harmonic resonance? Absolutely. Does that make sense? Well, your body is a five-pointed star, Mm -hmm. and that is harmonic resonance in the universe. Hydrogen is a five-pointed star. All protein is a five-pointed star. And literally, it is the sound of harmonic resonance. Awesome. We're going to pick this conversation up on the other side of the break, you guys. Grab a cup of tea, glass of water, beer, whatever it is that does it for you. And we'll see you on the other side of the break in just a moment. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free, AscendingHearts.com. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ron inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com M-E-T-T-A mindfulnessmusic.com Imagine being fired because of who you love. Imagine being denied medical treatment because of who you marry. Imagine being evicted because of who you are. Millions of Americans don't have to imagine this. They have to live it. Because in 31 states, it's legal to discriminate against LGBT people. Get the facts at beyondido.org. Brought to you by the Gill Foundation and the Ad Council. I am joined this evening with um, my dear friend, 
Thai Handal, a shamanic practitioner, astrologer, and just a level of wisdom and expertise that I love to share with all of you. I think so many people can benefit from everything that you have to offer and share, Ty. Um, so thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being a part of the show. Oh, thanks and, for having me. Oh, absolutely. Before we kind of dive back into that conversation, I do want to share with you guys listening, um, I am having some technical issues. I cannot jump online with Home Times Radio to bring callers on the air tonight, so I am so sorry. I do apologize. But bring it back around next week, you guys. I'll be right here. Same time, same place. Come back with your questions, and we'll we'll bring you on the air next week. So I do apologize if those those of you are, that are waiting um, to get on the air, have your questions answered. Um, keep 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 those questions and and join us next week here, and we'll do it again. Now, we were talking before the break about harmonic resonance, um, and you know my mind just kind of wanders with this stuff. And I'm wondering, uh, so would you say with people that are like chronically ill or have chronic illnesses or just seem to have repeat illnesses, like, you know, I know people that get bronchitis a couple times a year, every year, and I'm I'm over here going, well, I've never had bronchitis. Like, what what's happening with their harmonic resonance that where things keep manifesting? And then I want to pull in, you know, the, the topic of meditation and how that affects our harmonics and our health. So okay. I want to pick your brain about this. Okay. Um, you know, what's really interesting about our immune systems is what science is discovering now is that if our heart has harmonics, that means the frequency and resonance of our heart has harmonics, we have a healthy immune system. And when it doesn't have harmonics or the harmonics are weakened in certain areas, it's really affects our immune system. And for the last decade, I've been teaching that your immune system and your self-worth are the same reality. Oh, that's that's deep. Your immune system and your self-worth are the same reality. Absolutely. That's fascinating to think about. My goodness gracious. And just as we talk about this, I have seen clients that um, if their self-worth is negative, you know, basically they don't accept themselves or fight against themselves um, emotionally, you'll see that manifest in like autoimmune issues where the body's literally attacking itself. Absolutely. Oh my God, that's so fascinating. And it seems so simple to kind of go, oh, okay, well, if that's the cause, then let me, you know, let me change it. <laughs> or if that's what's creating the effect, let me change it, you know. But I guess for us humans, it's not that easy. <laughs> that's true. Um, you know, asking the heart, letting the heart simplify it. I usually have people ask their heart for one letter for the purpose of something they're experiencing. And usually the mind comes up with really negative words for that letter, and I keep going until their heart gives me a word. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so, you know, a lot of our ancestral issues, people give me the word P or peace, and it, mm-hmm. it really shows me, especially like, you know, you talk uh, to their ancestors a lot. Um, mm-hmm. And in the African traditions where that's concerned, there were ancient traditions to venerate our ancestors so that we knew what peace was and that we face death to make our ally instead of avoiding it and thinking it's our enemy. Because science has already taught us that nothing ever dies, it only transforms. And as you know, speaking to the ancestors, that they're just Mm -hmm. as alive as we are, they just don't have bodies anymore. Right, they are. They're just as alive and functional and interactive. Just Correct on a different plane, you know, in, in, a, in a different way. So, um, so with, what do you, what is, so when we talk about people with their, their reality that they're experiencing, you know, their self-worth is the same reality as their immune system. What couple of quick tips could you give people if there are people listening that have like these chronic illnesses or these reoccurring illnesses that manifest and, you know, anything as simple as like a, Recurring toothache to 
a common cold or whatever it is, that, you know, that keep manifesting illness, what advice would you give them to turn that around a little bit? Well, the, the meditation thing kind of comes up a little bit, um, but we are working with the duality of fear and love here, and fear being the greatest teacher of, of the love that we are. And there's really only three fears, and in astrology, the three zodiac signs that bring these fears, so add that together, is uh, cancer brings the fear of not having security, mm-hmm. and then Scorpio brings the fear of not having a deep connection with someone, And then Mm -hmm. Pisces brings the fear of what we cannot control. And these are in the heart when we get into the shadow and face the fears and find the love that's covered up by that fear. Um, I've seen the most results for people's health, especially around their immune system, have to do with Mm -hmm. facing, actually facing those fears inside of themselves in a type of meditation that we call creative visualization. Now, I'm going, to pause, I'm going to stop you right there for just a moment. Do you think that, okay. that facing that fear is being the space of creating the scalar wave? Absolutely, because it's fear and love. And if we face the fear and find the love that it's covering up and we put them into the same space, the fear cannot exist mm-hmm. once the love is unveiled. Right. Perfect. Mm-hmm. So I think that's important for people to really take home that message is if you can be in the same space of calling to your awareness, your fear, and the love behind that fear, naturally the higher vibration is going to cancel out the lower vibration. You know, that's 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 physics. Exactly, that's just physics. So go ahead, carry on. (laughs) So two types of meditation, concentration and creative visualization. Concentration is like the monks in Asia where they look at the end of their nose for hours and literally focus on one thing. And Westerners, I usually tell them that that's very difficult for them to do. But creative visualization tricks your left brain, your thinking brain, into doing a right brain intuitive function. And it's much quicker. It's much quicker. And they've done plenty of studies at Duke and other places of the effects of creative visualization um, and how it can completely transform your reality. So are you saying that by creative visualization, we manifest what we visualize? Yes, but it's, see, it's through the heart, and that brings that all around, that the heart is your place of, um, of that creative visualization of your uh, imagination would be the key word. Yes. And I think it's important for people just um, a lot of people that struggle with meditation, I think it's important for them to have an idea of a feeling. I think it's so important to be in the space of gratitude when you're doing this creative visualization. I know for me personally, when I visualize something and I am in this thankfulness for it, It's like I'm already accepting it as a part of my reality, as a part of me, kind of. That's what it feels like. And I've I've manifested some amazing things just in this visualization process. And I believe, don't quote me, but I believe that there are studies that have been done that show, I think, at the number of something like 90 seconds or more, holding a vision in as much detail as possible, that it's – more powerfully charged. And does that sound right? Um, like I guess the more focus you put on something. Um, well, imagine um, you know when you feel like you're in an anxious situation that you're not in. Your body doesn't really know the difference, and right. that also works for gratitude because gratitude brings you into the moment. You can't mm-hmm. live in the past or worry about the future when you're in gratitude. Exactly, and. In that space of gratitude, I think that, you know, a lot of people, they kind of they kind of trick themselves out of it because they go, well, I don't have it. How can I be thankful for it? And, and then they kind of get like that weird taste in their mouth. They get sour, you know, sour mouth about it. Like, well, I, I can't give thanks for it. I don't have it yet. And so they almost like they turn off and it's, it's like creating through trust, you know, reminding people creating through trust, not control, not having you know, 
and that's the difference between, you know, that ability to be grateful and, and create through gratitude. I think that's so important because um, a lot of people will kind of go into that, well, then it just turns into a wish. And I, I've dealt with a lot of people that are like, I'm just wishing and it's just endless hoping. And right. there's a whole different vibrational feel to gratitude versus like just wishing, <laughs> you know? Oh, oh so yeah. I think it's important to, to practice that because it is the next. And it's, it's, I always tell people to align with the emotional reality of what you want. Um, and that, I think, gives people something that feels somewhat palpable and tangible to connect to in that creative visualization process. Because when people hear the word meditation, they kind of shy away from it. Like, well, I don't know what's happening there. I don't know what's supposed to happen. And I think if we can remind people to stay in that creative power and you're fully embodying and embracing your personal power. Right. You know, everything that you want in life is a feeling. And see, that's the secret really people haven't figured out yet is that if they can find the feeling of what they want and let go of how it's going to come, then it literally, mm -hmm. the universe meets you there. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you, you know, you commit to it. You make a decision. You commit to it. And then it, it's like, um, to me, this is how I see energy sometimes. When you, when you align with something, it's almost like a domino effect. You flick one domino, you commit to the process, and then all the other dominoes that fall in line is the universe sort of falling to you. Everything then bows and bends and moves in your favor once you've aligned with something, you know, if it's in thought you know, or emotion when you align with it, but if you're confused, if you're back and forth and you're doubtful, there's just confusion and chaos, and it's really hard to manifest in that state. It's hard to manifest what you want. Um, yeah. So when you when you commit and don't look back, no questions asked, just keep that matter of fact attitude. Everything shifts in in um, in favor of what you've committed to. So remember that, you know, I want you guys listening to remember to practice decisiveness because that is is key to a lot of this. A lot of people struggle with that indecisive um, nature, and then it feels just nearly impossible to manifest anything. Um, before we run out of time, though, I do want to shift gears quickly and talk for a few moments, Ty, on okay. the next retreat that we have coming up. Um, mm. After such a wonderful success in Sedona, we've decided to build um, an itinerary for 2019, a new um, new location for you guys, new new experiences, new culture, um, new locations, and all of this is going to be able to be found on my website and maybe yours as well, Ty. I'm not sure if you're planning on putting it up on your website too. Absolutely. Able to find the information. Um, but our next retreat will be at the end of March 2019 in Bali. And you guys can expect um, this immersion into the culture. That's my goal. When we host these retreats, it is to not only share this information that Ty and I are sharing with you tonight, but also to hold space for you to have a rich experience with culture with the locals, with experiences that you may not be exposed to every day. <laughs> um, so can you give us, Ty, I know you've been there before. I have not. Um, just a couple oh, no, of it'll be my first time. What folks can experience in Bali or expect to experience in Bali. Okay. Uh, I believe we're calling this to return to the elements. Is that correct, Kim? That's right. Yep. Retreat to the yeah. elements. So, uh, you know, it's really returning to the elements and our own connection to nature, um, but also with the whole reality of what it is to truly receive, because sometimes we need assistance on breaking down uh, what that is yeah. that isn't allowing us to receive. And I know Kim and I, that's our kind of our main thing, and everything kind of always goes back to that, how can we hold space for you guys to really receive 
so that you can begin to attract and create and be empowered um, in your life and in your practice for the healers that came to the last retreat. We really loved that. That was great. Right, um, right. Mm-hmm. So you guys can find out more information about this. The full itinerary is up on my website now. Tickets are available. This is going to be a small, intimate group of about 15 people. So um, if this is something that sparks your interest, don't wait. Um, Again, this is a five-day retreat in Bali in um, the last week of March in 2019. So it's just around the corner. Um, And as we get closer, more information will be be released to you guys. You can find that information on my website at kimbabcockonline.com. And Ty, can you share again um, your website? And then you've got to wrap up the show. It's already been an hour. Uh, www.sedonasacredsun.com, or you can search my name, Ty Hudnall, Sedona, Arizona. You can find me that way, too. Thank you, Kim, for having me. Awesome. Thanks so much for being here, Ty. It's been so wonderful sharing with you. Good night, everyone. Thank you for being here, and we'll see you here next week. Take care. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye.